G'day folks, welcome to this fourth and final report of this playthrough of 1914 Serbian Mustabian by Michael Resch. Now, you may recall from the last video, video 3, we left where the Serbians had effectively driven the Austro-Hungarian forces, uh, the 5th Army, all the way back to uh, the Drina, way north across the uh, Sava River to the Danau, and were holding the line in the centre, but the Austro-Hungarians had really broken through a little bit in the south and had uh, begun to make their way, the 15th Corps had begun to make their way up to the north. So we pick up on game turn 28 at the start of November and the Serbians again you may recall were rotating their forces around to the south whilst the 13th Corps in the centre of the 5th Army were, were trying to break uh, around the, the edges of those uh, third core flank of that uh, Serbian army in the centre and we're making some, some good progress uh, before the Serbians had to rearrange their forces and, and rush some, some troops to the area. Down the south, this is one of the last uh, zoomed in maps of this area because it stays very quiet. Uh, there is pretty close balance of forces here now. Neither side has the upper hand. The Austro-Hungarians have shifted their forces to the north where they really think they can break through, while the Serbians have also uh, shifted a lot of their forces up to the north. So this is pretty quiet. There are, as you can see, two Serbian divisions in the area, some Montenegrins in support, but not much else. Now I'm going 29, game 10 29, you can see up in the far north of this area, those recovered Austro-Hungarian uh, divisions are beginning to make their way back into that Serbian region. They've spent the last few turns recovering from very low CEL levels, uh, and are now pushing into Serbian. And over the following turns, they push very hard and very rapidly, and there is only one Serbian division to slow them down. In the meantime, there's a very slow push by the 13th Corps in the centre. Now, in game turn 30, you can see again in the far north, uh, those Austro Hungarians pushing into Serbian region, whilst that uh, what we're seeing now is the 13th Corps and the 15th Corps combining in the centre. The 15th Corps train from the 6th Army is now way uh, located very much in the centre of the map. Here's a close-up of the situation up in the north and one Serbian division north of the Sava River now, vastly outnumbered by these Austro-Hungarians pushing to the east. And you can see that K Corps, the yellow K Corps train in the north across the Danau River about to cross over to the south to be able to supply those Austro-Hungarian forces and uh, support their drive back through this Serbian region. Elsewhere, for the time being, the Serbians hold their ground and uh, the centre is pretty steady. Uh, again, just to zoom in on the southern sector here, very quiet way down in the south, but uh, a lot of movement of those Austro-Hungarian forces um, against the centre of the Serbian line. And this is actually, as I said, the combination of the 13th Corps and the 15th Corps operating in this area. The 15th Corps train is actually right in the centre of, of that map there. Game turn 31 sees uh, more Austro-Hungarians arrive in this area. There's a bit of reshuffling of uh, supplies and attachments during this turn. Uh, basically, this is a, a division between the 13th and the 15th Corps right on this point. In game turn 32, this is when the Austro-Hungarians really begin their drive. You can see they've broken through between some of those improved Serbian positions in the southern part of that centre sector. You can see way up in the north there, driving through that Sermian region. Game turn 20, 33, sorry. Uh, more Austro-Hungarian drives through Sermian. They are pushing really without uh, much opposition. Uh, the Serbian division in this area has been really greatly demoralized. In the center, you can see the Serbians have left their improved positions and have now retreated out to the east. Now, a critical point came on game turn 34 when the Austro-Hungarians finally recaptured Savak. So from this point on, they'll gain one victory point per turn. The Serbians now are still way ahead. So this, the Austro-Hungarians need to gain territory in the east to begin to recuperate some of those lost VPs. Um, they get victory points but roughly corresponding to their eastward advance past Hex 20. Now, game turn 36, uh, the Serbians have again entrenched their positions just east of Savak, and the Austro-Hungarians are trying to push in between those two Serbian positions whilst in the north they've pushed the Serbians way back to the Sava River. Game turn 37 again, you can see 
there's only one, there's two small assets, two small Serbian assets north of the suburb, way out on the east near Beograd. Uh, otherwise, by this stage, the Austro Hungarians have recaptured the entire Serbian region and they've done so very rapidly. But in the center, this is where the Serbians have concentrated all their forces and they're holding quite well. Moving quite quickly now, game turn 38, it's the same situation. The Austro Hungarians are struggling to make any advance against these improved Serbian positions in the center. They cross the Sava River, it's hard to see, under that dark blue counter in the northeast between the, uh, the first and the second Serbian Corps, they've crossed the Sava, and this is going to secure them some key victory points on this final interface. Game turn 39 moves pretty quickly. Again, Austrians cannot budge those Serbians in the centre. The south has been quiet for a long time. All that's happening here now is some slight movement against that Sava River. The Austro-Hungarians gaining some ground in the north and again pushing that force across the river and basically trying to defend. They've actually built two pontoon bridges, one out on the left hand side of the Sava and one just two hexes to the right um, where they've moved in behind those Serbian lines. And in the final turn, here's the situation. Uh, again, no movement along that uh, line of improved Serbian positions. The Austro-Hungarians moving up in force alongside the Sava River. They've cleared out now the Serbians north of that Sava River. If I zoom in on the north, you can see they've recaptured all of Serbian. This is uh, original Austro-Hungarian territory. You can see that 8th Division of the 8th Corps, which is now part of K Corps, has crossed the Sava at a pontoon bridge. In the centre, it has been quite here for some time. Uh, hard to get supplies. Both sort of sides fairly well balanced here. Uh, in the north there, the Austro-Hungarians actually had a slight numerical advantage, but just were unable to push and really unwilling to exhaust their resources. A lot of those northern Austro-Hungarians were uh, quite reduced in combat effectiveness level. And looking further to the south, this has been quite for some time, as I said. Uh, this is 16th Corps now, operating from their train, 15th Corps, slightly to the north, you can see where it is there, and there's been no movement along the line. And the final image from the far south just shows those uh, the Montenegrin units on the border and a small Austro-Hungarian brigade guarding that uh, possible re-entry route for the, the Montenegrins, which they never used. So this brings the, the campaign to the end with a, a Serbian victory, uh, by no means convincing, and what's happening now is Winter arrives, uh, snow covers those mountains, and uh, it really slows down the opportunity for offensive action. Uh, so the Serbians win quite handily. Um, they're, I mean, roughly their final victory point uh, allocation was roughly 24. I say that roughly because uh, I, on many of these Serbian turns, I forgot to give them a victory point for Savak. I forgot to give them a victory point for the lack of uh, Austrian artillery next to Beograd. Um, and that was some early record keeping mistakes I made roughly between turns 10 and 20, which, um, yeah, skewed that victory point marker a little bit. Even forgetting to include those, the final victory point marker was roughly about 18. That's forgetting those mistakes. I've um, increased a few. Clearly though, I mean, the Austro-Hungarians have, have turned the tide of this offensive and they are pushing back deep into Serbian territory. Um, and are, are very close to Beograd. So uh, had, this, had, this, uh, had this campaign gone for a few more turns uh, and a few more interfaces, uh, I'm pretty confident the Austro-Hungarians could have pushed back. But that's the idea. It's, it's closely balanced around, around this, this point. So that is 1914 Serbian a Serbian victory, largely due to two things, being able to hold off the Austro-Hungarian forces in the centre with that 8th Corps and the 13th Corps, the Serbians being able to defend, recapture Savak early and hold Savak for so long, gave them a lot of victory points, and being able to launch a massive offensive into that Serbian region, which um, not only gave them victory points, but removed some key Austro-Hungarian divisions from the fighting for several weeks in the middle of the campaign. Um, being able to keep pressure on those forces, being able to keep their combat effectiveness levels low, having them disordered or combat ineffective is really very critical. It is um, <clears throat> certainly in this playthrough, it was more important to keep them at low CEL than it was to uh, force strength reductions 
or to gain ground. Forcing a unit onto a low combat effectiveness level means that they can't fight. Um, they become combat ineffective or disordered and they have to retreat and they can't initiate combat. Which means that when those offensive do begin, there is little that those forces can do. In the south, the Serbians did just enough to slow down the Austro-Hungarians throughout the first half of the campaign. <clears throat> they made just one critical mistake, that one battle that didn't go in their favour, which quite suddenly turned into a very strong Austro-Hungarian counterattack. It was very poor timing, and I wonder if the Serbians should have just um, stayed on the defensive and tried not to capture, recapture Visegrad in, in the south. Um, their failure of their offensive and the Austro-Hungarian counter-offensive meant that the Austro-Hungarians pushed them all the way back to Azici, they captured Azici, and then used those roads to the north to assist the 5th Army and, and 13th Corps in the north to um, drive into uh, Serbian territory. And then, um, over time, the recovery of those units, Austro-Hungarian units in the far north, and their ability to redrive through that Serbian region, and then those units that actually crossed the Sava River right at the end there, um, could have been disastrous for the Serbians, but um, fortunately for Serbia, the campaign came to an end. Winter came, and uh, the snow began to fall. It's a brilliant game, highly recommended. And again, thirty-five dollars on GMT for sale. I picked this up for eighteen dollars when it was half price. Um, very highly recommended. Um, it feels very historical. It feels like um, you get a very good sense of, of how the campaign campaign uh, played out. All right, that's the end.